And welcome to our community. Susie Thomas with you this morning. We are visiting with Suzanne Nicholson. She is Professor of Biblical Studies at Malone University in Canton, Ohio. Good morning. Good morning. Something really exciting coming up. She leads. Yes. What is this? She leads summit. Uh, This is a summit that is uh, put on by Missio Alliance. And Malone is serving as one of the regional venues. And it's it's an interesting mix because the main summit is in Pasadena, California. And so part of the summit will be simulcast at Malone University. But then we also have times where we have uh, tabletop, tabletop, you know, discussions with mm-hmm. the people who are there. And then we also have a regional panel of speakers. So it's a combination of local speakers as well as the main speakers out in Pasadena, California. Who is this for? This is for anyone in the church who is interested in supporting women in leadership in the church. And the idea is men and women partnering together in leadership in the church, that we uh, want to, uh, in many ways, em- empower women who oftentimes have not... Um, maybe not thought about their gifts and graces Mm -hmm. for ministry or have not been empowered in their churches uh, to be able to lead in ministry. And so it's a means of uh, encouraging those women, but also, again, not having it, you know, simply be a a women's meeting. But the idea is that together, you know, as men and women, that we are leaders in the church together, that the gospel is best shared when we work together the way that, that God designed it to be. What uh, local speakers do you have participating? We have uh, our panel discussion is several local speakers. We have Dr. T.C. Ham, who it teaches Old Testament for us at Malone, and he is a fantastic professor, mm-hmm. uh, well loved. He is an excellent teacher, and he has uh, been very committed to uh, to women's issues, to promoting women in leadership, and so he's uh, very excited to be on our panel. Uh, we also have a couple of other people who will be serving for us. We have uh, Debbie Noble, who is a Malone alum, and she also um, is uh, basically received her JD from the University of Akron Law School. So she has um, a much sort of different perspective than than a professor. Uh, she also has been ordained as a as a pastor by the Evangelical Friends Eastern Region. And she's served as a youth pastor, and currently she is the pastor of adult education and discipleship at Alliance Friends Church. Mm. Then the third person that we have is Kara Ulmer, and she is the director of the World Relief Akron Office, which is a refugee resettlement agency. And so she, uh, since the office opened in early 2015, the office has helped to resettle 300 refugees in the Mm. city of Akron. Mm. So they're doing some very important work in Akron. And prior to World Relief, Kara directed Freedom Stones International, a social enterprise that worked with over 100 human trafficking survivors or at-risk uh, people in uh, Ghana, West Africa, Thailand, and Cambodia. Uh, so she's done a whole bunch of other things, she, um, has a lot just of experience with really helping the, the least who, you know, really just need to be, you know, need to have help and need to ha- be empowered. And so she, you know, she'll be a great person on the panel as well. Your local speakers sound like they could be the national lineup when you're talking about the issues and the outreach that they've been having. Um, Yeah, really tackling some tough topics. Are these the things that they will be talking about that day? Well, we're going to be talking uh, in general about um, women in leadership in the Mm -hmm. church. And so part of what we're doing is, is again, sort of tag teaming with what the national uh, organization does. And so... Some of what we're going to be doing is asking them questions that come up from the discussion that we hear earlier in the day. And so I can tell you a little bit about some of the major speakers, if you'd like, which might help to sort of That was my very next question. Who is talking at the national level? Okay, we have uh, Jean Birch uh, is talking, and she is a pastor. She's the senior pastor of Community Bible Church of Greater Pasadena. She also serves as the president of Community Bible Community Development Corporation, Um, And that provides affordable housing and social services uh, in the area. And she's also a founding member of the Clergy Community Coalition. Mm. And so she has uh, her MA in Global Leadership from Fuller Theological Seminary, and she serves currently on Fuller's Board of Trustees. Um, interesting thing about Pastor Jean, she received the 29th Congressional Women in Leadership Award. Wow. And she has also ministered internationally in Costa Rica, Israel, and South Africa. So she's got wow. just a wide range of experience as well. 
Uh, they also have Todd Hunter, uh, who will be speaking. A guy's allowed to speak at of this? Of course, of course. <laughs> it's, it's women and men leading together, right? Okay. So Todd Hunter is the founding bishop of the Diocese of Churches for the Sake of Others, and he is the founding pastor of Holy Trinity Anglican Church in Costa Mesa, California. He's also a past president of Alpha USA and the former national director for the Association of Vineyard Churches. Oh. So it's, it's nice to have this just this wide array of experiences between uh, the speakers. Quite the fa- a diverse group as far Qu- as experience. We also have uh, Nancy Ortberg is one of the other national speakers, and she currently serves as the CEO of Transforming the Bay with Christ, mm. uh, which seeks to help catalyze a holistic gospel movement in the San Francisco Bay Area. So, uh, great you experience. know, if we can just take a park there a little bit, <laughs> wouldn't wouldn't California, as you're talking about Pasadena, San Francisco, wouldn't they be surprised at what God is doing in their community right now? I think they would be. I don't know if they'd be surprised. I think they would be the first ones to say, "Look at what God is yeah, doing in our community." Yeah, yeah, you know, God is doing great things. Some people feel that. Um, it's a godless area. California's a godless state, you know, and you talk about, oh, my goodness. Well, we'll uh, we just recently spoke to someone out who works in Hollywood, and and she said it, it, it. people would be very, very surprised to find out that how Jesus is alive and well and welcome in so many places here and uh, that they are able to use that medium to tell that story. It sounds like that is what's happening here as well. I think so. I think it depends on where you look. You mm-hmm. know, if you if you look at, you know, if you think of godless Hollywood or, you know, those kind of things, you know, I think you sort of have a stereotype. Yes. Um, but if you look to, to these, these pastors of these churches and these ministries, you know, they would say, if you look a little closer, you'll see the ways in which God is is actively transforming lives in Hollywood and elsewhere. And Absolutely. so you Pasadena know, yeah. and San Francisco. Absolutely. I said anyone who uh, doesn't believe that there are any Christians out in Southern California has never tried to find parking on Easter morning at the Hollywood Bowl uh-huh. because it is packed and it's impossible. So they're there. They're there. And they're active. Who else have you got? Uh, those are our main speakers mm-hmm. and our main panelists. And again, some of what we're going to be doing is, you know, sitting together at our tables and having conversations. And so when we have these national leaders, uh, then when we get to the panelists, we'll be asking them a variety of questions. And some of it will come from the discussion that we've heard throughout the day. And so we'll be talking about things like, um, you know, what are some of the best ways to uh, to support women who are interested in, in ministry or who are interested in serving in their churches? How How can we empower women better? in our churches. Um, And even just to ask from personal experience, what are ways that you have seen or you have experienced um, empowerment to to lead in the church and to spread the gospel effectively? What what helps you to minister and how do you try and teach that to others? Let me turn that question right around and ask you, what are best ways we can support women in leadership roles in the church? Ooh, that is great. Um, You'll get a little precursor here. Uh, I think part of that is, some of it is for for women who are already doing things in the church to be aware that they're modeling to others in the church and to be on the lookout uh, for people. I think sometimes we need to develop more of a culture of call in our churches that uh, we need to think about. And, and it's not just young people, um, whether it's people in high school or college who, you know, you see their heart for Jesus and you see the ways in which uh, they have some real gifts that would be helpful in ministry, whether that's pastoral care or preaching or teaching or whatever it might be. But also that can be adults as well. Um, you know, a lot of times pastors are, are second career uh, professionals and they've they've had great careers in 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 other areas, and then all of a sudden they go, you know, God is calling me to something new mm-hmm. in this phase mm-hmm. of my life. So I think Part of empowering women is to be on the lookout for people who love Jesus, who really seem to have leadership skills, and who are adept at understanding Scripture, being able to teach it, being able to be compassionate uh, and kind and caring. So I think that's that's part of it is is developing that culture of call, and um, and sometimes it's as simple as preaching from the pulpit. Uh, the stories of, of great women of, of faith in Scripture, um, because a lot of times, you know, you you hear of Abraham and David and, and you know, all sorts of other key figures in, in Scripture, but we need to also think about, you know, Deborah 
and um, some a lot of times it's unnamed women. I mean, it can That's be right. it can be a, a small verse here or there about Junia who who was uh, named as an apostle or Priscilla or other women, but sometimes it's the Samaritan woman at the mm, well, yes, exactly. or it's it, the the Syrophoenician woman, the Canaanite woman, mm-hmm. who um, you know argues with Jesus and basically wins. <laughs> <laughs> um, who argues with Jesus and wins? <laughs> but but she does because you know she's trying to get healing for her daughter, and Jesus says, "I've come only to the to the lost house of Israel," and and you know. And I think he was having a little fun with her at the same time. I I think there's some ways in which Jesus was doing this, sort of having this standoffish attitude, partly for the sake of the disciples and the others who are going, why are you talking Mm -hmm. to a woman? Mm -hmm. And why are you talking to a foreign woman at that? And he gives her opportunity to show great faith. And, you know, they start talking about, you know, why should we, you know— Feed the dogs. We need to feed the children's right. And they, and, they and, seem and she to says, connect on that level yeah. that everybody else sitting there wasn't quite getting in, getting it. Yeah, and she says, "Hey, yeah. even the dogs get the scraps off the table." Yeah. And, and he yeah. he tells her, "Oh, you you have <laughs> such great faith, you know, yes. and and go, you know, your daughter has been made well, and yes. and so it's an opportunity." to see that it doesn't matter, your gender doesn't matter, your ethnicity doesn't matter, mm-hmm. but that what matters is, is faith in Christ. And, and so that's just a huge, a huge passage. And, and so preaching those kinds of passages um, is something that I think is, is very important as well, is to see these, these women throughout Scripture who are very faithful and, um, you know, receive the blessings of, God's, uh, God, of God as a result. Uh, talking about the the culture of call, what as moms and grandmas can we do as models for our children and grandchildren when we see leadership capabilities in them to nurture that? And how do we model it and nurture it for that next generation coming up? Ooh, that's an interesting question in so many ways. And part of that, um, Part of that, I think of, of my own my own walk, and I saw my mom model for me. Every day she'd sit down with her Bible. I don't know, it'd be like 10 o'clock in the morning. She'd pull out her Bible. She'd pull out her upper room that she was reading, mm-hmm. and she would sit and she'd have her devotional. And so she taught me about the importance of daily prayer and, and, and reading the scriptures every day. And so I saw her do that, and that taught me to do the same. And, um, and also... Um, Really helping women. Sometimes we really have to fight against the culture uh, as far as there are all, all sorts of cultural expectations about what women can or cannot do or what a woman is supposed to look like or how a woman is supposed to act. And um, ultimately, um, there's this sense of, you know, a woman can be anything that God calls her to do. And so um, sometimes that's, you know, thinking outside the box a little bit and mm-hmm. doing things a little bit differently. And so it might mean that, that a woman is going to be a rocket scientist. Mm-hmm. It might mean that a woman is going to be a pastor in a church. It might mean that a woman is going to open a daycare. You can do anything um, both within and outside of sort of the stereotypes that you have for women. The question is, what are you called to? If, if God has given you a heart for loving children and you want to, you know, run a daycare out of your home or start a business in that sense, absolutely, that's what God has called you to do. If you as a woman are good with math and science, then let's encourage our women to become engineers and to become scientists. And if you are a woman who... Um, not only has a heart for God, I certainly hope all women would have a heart for God, but who has a desire to teach the scriptures, to lead Bible studies, to um, to help whether it's youth, whether it's adults, um, and to understand who Jesus is better, then let's empower women to do that as well, um, because that is the calling for that woman. And so I think part of it is is helping women to realize that that their calling ultimately is, is determined by God and not what culture says you should or shouldn't do. Mm-hmm. We live in a day and age where the technology, it's hard to keep up, but it gives you so many opportunities, if you are called to a leadership position, to lead in ways that didn't exist five years ago, ten years ago for sure. And when I look at some of these moms, I'm blown away that there are mommy bloggers who it's, it's not just enough that they are doing the incredibly hard and important work of running a household and caring for a husband and family, but they're also blogging about it. And then you'll see them 
posting regularly on Facebook, and maybe putting together a video pretty regularly. I mean, I think good land. How, how much are you putting? <laughs> how much are you putting on yourself? Um, is that realistic? Is it? Does it just depend on what a person is called to? Or do we live in a day and age where leadership looks totally different, and in some ways is just out of control? Yes, to both. <laughs> Um, I think it is really hard to set boundaries. Um, And I sometimes tell my students that B is for boundaries. I told that to a student this week. And, um, and And I am, in some ways, it's the pot calling the kettle black because I take on far too many different responsibilities and don't have enough time to do all the things that I've said yes to. So part of boundaries is learning to say no. And as much as I'd like to do that thing, it's probably not wise for my work life family balance. So, yes, there's there's a lot of opportunities, but that also means we need to be wise in how we we choose those opportunities. Mm, I really love what you're saying and I want to peel that back a little more. We need to take a short break. We'll be back with Suzanne Nicholson and she leads after these words. You're listening to our community.